night, Ukrainian President Zelensky said 200,000 troops were currently invading his country. And that's what we have here on the ground. Shannon, send it back to you. All right, Lucas, thank you very much. We'll check back with you as this plays out. Uh, with the latest on the Biden administration response to tonight's developments, let's bring in White House correspondent Peter Ducey. All right, Peter, uh, the White House has been waiting and predicting this for days. So what's the response tonight? And I've been in some of the office areas here. There are staff much uh, staff on hand much later than usual as they figure out how exactly they are going to respond to this. We will not see the president this evening. They're telling us that we will see him tomorrow early in the afternoon after he gets off a virtual call with the leaders of the G7. This event, though, has been... A, predicted and it kind of unfolded here at the Biden White House in slow motion. Remember earlier today, Jen Psaki said that their assessment after putting the first batch of sanctions on Putin yesterday was that he was improvising and adapting his strategy. She said they still believed that he was going to invade, but that he was improvising and adapting. It doesn't appear that that happened because right now, uh, among one of the most severe actions that they warned about appears to be unfolding across the country. In a statement tonight attributed to the president, he says, President Putin has chosen a premeditated war that will bring a catastrophic loss of life and human suffering. The president says the world will hold Russia accountable. He also says tomorrow he will speak to the American people to announce the further consequences the United States and our allies and partners will impose on Russia for this needless act of aggression against Ukraine and global peace and security. In the president's last on-camera statement about this, he said what that consequence is going to be. It'll be more sanctions. And in a set of remarks in the East Room yesterday, he said, if Russia goes further with this invasion, we stand, to, we stand prepared to go further with sanctions. Something this president is not going to do, though, and officials top to bottom want to make it absolutely clear, he will not send U.S. troops into Ukraine to get in a gunfight with Russians. The president will offer defensive help to the Ukrainians, but he will not offer American boots on the ground to go and shoot it out and try to stop the Russians uh, from what they're doing tonight. Shannon. All right, Peter Ducey at the White House, thank you very much. National security correspondent Jennifer Griffin has been covering the buildup to tonight's military action by Russia from the beginning. She joins us now live on the phone. And Jennifer, from what we're hearing from our folks all over the ground there, this seems multifaceted, many cities, many regions involved tonight. Does this square up with uh, what we had expected uh, as far as this actually turning into an invasion? And, and it looks like multi-city attack. <laughs> Shannon, what we're seeing right now is a full-scale invasion. I spoke to a U.S. official at tonight when the initial uh, missiles began striking these various cities in Ukraine, and I was told that we are seeing pre-assault fires. We can expect this to go on for a few hours. Then this will be followed by a land attack. And I was told by a senior U.S. official that um, who's monitoring the situation right now uh, that you can expect all of the full forces of Vladimir Putin that he's arrayed uh, to then enter into Ukraine. So this is the beginning of a very serious full-scale invasion that will be followed by a land assault. Uh, you're seeing these pre-assault fires. These are ballistic missiles. They're cruise missiles. You will expect to hear um, it will be followed by artillery. Uh, they are taking out command and control sites. Um, this is something I would not be surprised to be seeing waves of, of, of air, uh, air assault uh, to begin at, at any time. It's a little surprising that they're doing this in, in, uh, at, at first light. You would expect something like this to be done overnight, um, but it's clear Vladimir Putin wants the world to see what he is doing. What struck me by his, from his speech tonight was the chilling words that he used when he started talking about demilitarizing and denazifying uh, Ukraine. Supposedly, uh, there have been videos all day of Nazis being played on Russian state television. Uh, the way that in which Putin is describing Ukraine, he's describing it as an existential threat to Russia. This is a figment of his imagination. This is a man, if you look in his eyes, this is somebody who has gone completely mad. What we are seeing tonight 
is a moment in history, something we have not seen for generations. War on the continent of Europe, a, a sovereign country being invaded by a nuclear power. One of the reasons that the president, of course, is not sending U.S. troops or uh, promising any sort of air flights over uh, over Ukraine to defend uh, Ukraine is because you're talking about a nuclear power. Uh, the U.S. and NATO are not going to go to war with a nuclear power, uh, but they are going to support the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are going to fight. I thought Zelensky's speech tonight, the president, was noble. He, he you know, many people doubted this uh, President Zelensky and, and wondered whether he would flee in the, and, and the way Ashraf Ghani did from Afghanistan. This was a noble, noble speech tonight from this former comedian, late night host, who is now the president of a nation that is being invaded uh, by a nuclear power. Yeah, you saw the deep passion and commitment from him and the urgency in what he was saying tonight. Um, Jennifer, you also flagged a little bit earlier tonight some of what Putin had to say. He says, um, a couple of words for those who would be tempted to intervene. Russia will respond immediately and you will have consequences that you never have had before in your history. Is that to the U.S.? This is a, a direct message to the U.S. and NATO. One of the reasons you see 11, uh, that Putin has put so many of his surface warships in the Black Sea, uh, 11, uh, you have not only amphibious landing ships, so that it is possible that he could use those for Marines to come in and take Odessa, but you also, it is to send a signal, uh, those warships, those Russian warships in the Black Sea have cruise missiles on them. They are... Uh, they are there to tell NATO, don't try to send any warships, don't move closer. Remember, we had the USS Harry S. Truman uh, near Italy. We have uh, positioned there are some submarines uh, carrying out exercises this week. This, but but Putin would be misreading NATO and the U.S. The U.S. has been very calibrated in making sure that it is bolstering its Article Five NATO allies in the Baltics. Poland, Lithuania, the Baltics, as well as Romania, but not to provoke Putin by putting excessive numbers of forces there that would then justify what we are seeing tonight in terms of this invasion into this this war against Ukraine. And Jennifer, while I have you, uh, NATO Secretary General also putting out a statement tonight condemning what Russia has done, saying we're going to stick together. It says we stand with the people of Ukraine at this terrible time. NATO will do all it takes to protect and defend all allies. Of course, that doesn't include Ukraine. That was one of the sticking points with Putin, who wanted a guarantee that Ukraine would never be a part of NATO. Um, but while this is confined to a country for now that does not have an Article 5 obligation, um, how closely now is, is NATO drawn into this you know, potential conflict, which we hope does not broaden any further? Well, I think you have to listen. When you have a madman like Putin, who is making the kind of statements and revising history the way he has in in uh, his recent speeches, you have to look at what he's saying, because leaders like this, they say uh, what they're going to do. They telegraph their punches. And so if in, in the speech, the, the written speech that he uh, wrote last July and sent out to his armed forces justifying this, uh, this uh, invasion of Ukraine, he also mentioned, quite worrisome, and this is something that uh, U.S. intelligence is watching closely, uh, he mentioned Poland, he mentioned Lithuania, and the, the history uh, of those countries. That should be of concern to anyone in Europe tonight and anyone uh, in NATO, because uh, Poland, there's a very worrisome, you know, right now Putin has about 30,000 forces inside Belarus. Nobody's talking about how basically Belarus has become a vassal state of, of Putin. He's already extended the borders of Russia um, in terms of the way he's, he's positioned his forces in Belarus. And that is just across the border from Poland. And that is why the U.S. sent the 82nd Airborne and other uh, forces to, to reassure the eastern flank of NATO. But this is, once you start a war like Putin has started tonight, you start on an escalation ladder, and you don't know. There are unintended consequences, and what we don't know is how this ends. Mm -hmm. 
Jennifer Griffin, thank you very much. We will check back in with you as this continues to play out. We want to check in on the ground there. Let's go back live to Ukraine now. Correspondent Steve Harrigan is on the ground in Kiev. Move me anywhere you um, want. Is Steve, uh, what is your situation there as uh, morning is coming? Hey, Sean, looking off to my right here. As dawn is just about to break in this capital city of three million, and over the last five to ten minutes, we've heard maybe six to eight explosions in rapid succession. Off to my right, a slight orange glow coming up from those explosions. We think they're likely grad missile attacks, and the targets here in this capital city are command and control. They're trying to hit key communication centers, as well as headquarters, military bases, and airports. The important thing, really, the question at this point, before the sun comes up here and the church bells going off behind me, is what are we seeing? And the real answer is we don't know yet. Putin has said one thing, and another thing has happened on the ground since the start of this crisis weeks ago. He said he was going to pull out his troops from Belarus. He didn't. He said he wasn't going to attack Ukraine. He did. So now he's saying this is an attack in Donbass. This is a special operation. He's not even calling it a war. We've seen troops go into Donbass, but it's obviously not stopping there. This is bigger than eastern Ukraine because we're hearing explosions here in the capital. But the question mark is what follows these explosions? Is there going to another explosion off behind me? That's due south. Is this going to be an attempt at regime change? The, the simple question is, is Putin going big? And the fact that we're seeing explosions here means that the capital is a target and likely the political leadership here will be a target as well. This is the opening salvo. Earlier today we saw cyber attacks, uh, websites hit, then we saw troops go into the east and now we're hearing explosions in the capital. How far is he going to go? We know that Ukraine has weapons from the U.S. We know they've gotten hundreds of millions of dollars of weapons, things like Javelin anti-tank missiles at about $175,000 apiece by the dozen. We know they're determined to fight. They have a million-man army. But when it comes to air power, when it comes to air defenses, they are clearly outnumbered. So their only chance really is guerrilla fighting in the cities. And, it, you know, this could go very bad, very, very bad, if that does happen. Oh. Mm. The focus of the fighting now will be in the east, will be in Donbass. There's two breakaway regions there, which Putin has recognized as independent. The problem is, he hasn't just recognized areas where separatists control. He basically did, as Joe Biden said, take a huge chunk out of Ukraine. That's what he's trying to do. The boundaries are much bigger than where the Russian separatists control. Two and a half million people live there. So even if it is just a fight in eastern Ukraine, it could be massive. Ukraine will fight to hold that territory. Russia will fight to take it. And the West is going to flood Ukraine with weapons to help them fight. No U.S. troops on the ground, no Western troops on the ground here, but there will be a weapons flow. And it's hard to see how that fight stays there in eastern Ukraine. Is it coming to the capital? I'm standing here as the sun starts to come up, and I'm wondering, the 30 to 40 explosions that we've heard, is that the end? Are they just knocking out command and control? Or is it just setting the table, setting the table for a ground invasion? And if Russian troops come here on the ground to the capital, how will Ukrainian citizens react? Certainly many have left. Certainly many will be in their basements. But many soldiers and civilians will come out to fight. So this is an incredibly dangerous situation. We're just going to have to keep an eye on it over the next 48 hours. Shannon, back to you. Steve, you have been in difficult situations, war zones around the world. Um, it is eerie to hear those church bells there as they are mingled in with explosions. You talk about these people and their determination to fight. Is it your sense that we know they have the determination. Do they have the ability? Do they need to have what they need to mount any real kind of defense in these cities if it comes to that? You know, I think in the short term, Ukraine has no chance at all. But in the long term, I think they have every chance in the world. It really depends how this war goes. But I remember, you know, a war nobody heard of 25 years ago in a place called Chechnya. And the Russians boasted. They said, we're going to take Chechnya population 1 million in two hours. Ten years later, Russians were still fighting in Chechnya. It's easy to take a city. 
it's hard to hold a city. The Russians can come in and take Kiev. They can carry out regime change. They can decapitate the leadership here in whatever brutal form they choose. They can do that, but they can't hold on. I think, if you're asking me my opinion, which I'm glad to give, if this is a major war, this is the downfall of Vladimir Putin. This is the downfall of his Russia. This is the downfall of an autocracy. Because they can win in the short term, but they cannot win in the long term. Ukraine, Europe is not going to stand for it. Excellent points. Steve Harrigan, we will check back with you. Thank you very much. Critical to our on-scene reporting and knowing what's going on there. We'll be back.